cleaning out the garage and found my old childhood Matchbox car set. So I wanted to put together a Your Dad Academy that you can do with Matchbox cars. So let's do a, a quick uh, demo of what we're gonna be talking about. I showed my kids every single one of my Matchbox cars from when I was like eight years old. They loved it. This was my favorite one. Lots of love on this one. I even tried to repaint it. If you had a favorite Matchbox car, please leave a comment as to which one was your favorite. And as always, please like and subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand. To test out the different speeds of the cars, we're gonna use a test track like this one shown in this example right here. So you should have the cars out for your kiddos to look at and maybe ask them which one they think is going to be faster. might choose this one because this is the sports car that has the most aerodynamic. But since these cars are really old, um, there's other things that you have to be worried about. And so ask them what are the other things that you have to worry about when you talk about cars and how fast they're gonna go, especially on a track like this. And so you're trying to see if they know about friction and how it would affect the speed of these cars. So what we want to do is we want to kind of test it out. Now they, these guys have to watch because they don't fit into my little practice cart that is going to push them down the track. So these guys are just going to watch right here. So what you want to do is you want to set them up and ask a couple questions to see what your kiddos think about these cars. So you could test them by hand and say which one is going to be the fastest and give them a little test run. But if you're going to scientifically do this, you don't know if your hand gave the same amount of force. So that's what this ruler is right here. So what you can do is give them all the same push at the same time and they can kind of make a guess as to which one of these cars is going to be the fastest. According to that push, it looks like the police car might be the fastest, then maybe the Lancia, then the Hulk van, then the pickup truck, and the slowest one actually is the black Lamborghini. So the reason why we use this mechanism instead of pushing with our hands, I just want to show you real quick. The mechanism is powered by a um, rubber band. And so that means the force every time should be the same every time on each car. So that way it's not based on my muscle memory pushing the car. Potential energy is stored energy due to the state of the object. It can be stored from gravity, an elastic or a spring, or even chemical or electrical energy. Now, if you don't have one of these mechanisms, which you can probably buy for five, seven dollars, just use gravity. And so have a discussion about the potential energy of the car, and you should start with the back wheel on the farthest back part of the track, and then we're just gonna use gravity every time on the car to make it go. We're gonna put each car in and we're gonna test them three times and so this will launch them with the same force every time. So here we go. One, all right. So here is the Hulk van. Here is the Lancia Stratos. This one's really beat up. This was my favorite car. Here's the yellow pickup. So just to show you how the mechanism works, we pull this back and there's a little uh, rubber band in there that does the same amount of force every time. So let's load up the police car and let's see how it goes. All right, so now we're gonna look at the data. So I have all the cars lined up where they are. The black Lamborghini and the yellow pickup truck didn't make it to the end, so we didn't get averages for them. We just took them out of the data because they did not travel the full two meters. So the Hulk van averaged 1.68 seconds. The white Lancia averaged 1.30 seconds. And the police car averaged 1.17 seconds for the two meter travel distance. Mm -hmm. 
So let's discuss how we found these average times. So we're just gonna make up some numbers, two, three, and then four. So these are some made up times, they're really easy. You can use a calculator to do this. We just use these numbers so that we could do it in our head. So if you add two plus three plus four, you get nine seconds total. And then since this is an average, you divide by how many trials, there are three. So nine divided by three, that means the average is three seconds. So here's a different data table that I can show you how to do examples for average time and average speed of just the police car. So what I did is I took the three trials, one, two, three, and the times for the police car, 1.23, 1.31, and 0.96, and I added them together and you get 3.50. If you use your calculator and divide that by three, you get 1.66666, or you can just average that or round up to 1.17 seconds. Now for the average speed. Since the cars are traveling for two meters, what you divide is the two meters divided by that average time, 1.17 seconds. When you divide that, the average speed of the car is 1.71 meters per second. So to complete the data table, we're gonna take this 1.17 seconds and write it up here for the average time of the car. And then we're also going to take the average speed, which we have as 1.71 meters per second, and we're gonna write it up in the data table right up here. So this one, the potential energy, is the elastic potential energy. It's the energy stored in the rubber band. Right here, it's gravitational potential energy, the potential energy stored from gravity pushing on the car to go down. But if this was a real car, what kind of energy is the car using? And then if this was a Tesla car, one that you plug in in the garage, what kind of potential energy is that car using? And finally, once this stored energy is in the car and you transform it into that, what kind of energy does it have when it's moving? So the discussion that you wanna have is about um, the speed of the car, how friction plays a role in the speed of the car. You can talk about the acceleration and what's happening to the acceleration over time as the car travels, what happens to the acceleration. And finally, one of the things that you can talk about is what's happening to the energy. If it's potential energy right here, what's happening to the energy as it goes to a different form of energy? What's happening? So there's all different things that you can have. And so I'm gonna pause it right here and you can have that discussion and then I'm gonna give an explanation. But if this was a real car, what kind of energy is the car using? And then if this was a Tesla car, one that you plug in in the garage, what kind of potential energy is that car using? And finally, once this stored energy is in the car and you transform it into that, what kind of energy does it have when it's moving? So the discussion that you wanna have is about um, the speed of the car, how friction plays a role in the speed of the car. You can talk about the acceleration and what's happening to the acceleration over time as the car travels, what happens to the acceleration. And Finally, one of the things that you can talk about is what's happening to the energy. If it's potential energy right here, what's happening to the energy as it goes to a different form of energy? The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change or be converted from one form to the other. So the potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy, and as it slows down, the kinetic energy can be converted back into potential energy. I have added the channel to Patreon so you can support me by clicking the link down in my description and I wanted to say thank you to Summer and Mike for being my first patrons. 
Thank you for joining me today with Your Dad Academy. Please like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. And I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane as I got to play with my Matchbox cars one more time. And remember, keep science awesome.